I'm from Durban originally. Uh, I studied in Durban uh, to honours, and then I went to Ireland, and then I went to England. Then I came back to Johannesburg to do my masters. Initially, the idea was I got accepted to the Glasgow School of Art. So the idea was I would go to, to Ireland, uh, work for a while, save enough, and then go to this course. And I ended up in a, quite a rad um, design job. And I did several books beforehand, but there were always ways of getting into or applying to, to art schools. So these books kind of became a way of articulating ideas and developing ideas. That's where the text kind of thing came in. And the images, if there were images at all, became a way of annotating those texts. I started a holding company or a brand called All Theory No Practice, which now is just a production company essentially. Mokogo had started with Under Blomman and Henry Boyens. We started essentially as well as friends. Uh, the idea initially when we started it was that if we work a lot and, and kind of undo that normative thing of uh, professional artist shows every 18 months and with one gallery or another and they're beholden to that gallery. We kind of wanted to undo that and we showed sort of like 11 times a year with any kind of a gallery in any space. And the logic was that if, you, if we're working a lot, you can't ignore us. You can't ignore it and then we can carry on doing it and then uh, we can eventually become a commercial artist, which is kind of what we have in the bazaar. On the weekends doing avant-garde art, which was very much kind of make stuff, photograph it, print it, exhibit it, very kind of practically orientated and very kind of do rather than overly think or rationalize. It's actually infinitely more fun to do that than it is to kind of simply moving in the corner, never, you know, never producing anything. It becomes the, that one's going to win, and that one won, and then slowly but surely it did kind of drag me out of it. The way the, the actual image, uh, or say the art object and, and the text base works, uh, is, is used for some things and, and not for others. For some of the, the photography, uh, I did have the two coupled together because it's quite, I wanted to kind of explode the frame a little bit and say this is who this person is and there is a whole system of power dynamics and, and social structures behind how this image was generated. We were a film called Will to Power, and the central kind of a prop from it actually had to be made for the film to happen. I actually had to make something. So then it was a case of, well, if I actually want to make this film, I need to make the prop. And so the systematically making these objects, and then the idea was that these ob selling these objects in a sort of normal commercial gallery environment would finance the films, which is what I really want to do. Do I want the audience to engage with the work? Yes. In a, either in a motive sense or in an intellectual sense. Preferably a kind of a hybrid of the two, because a lot of these works are quite grotesque. Some of them are quite abject in a sense, uh, not to elicit a particular kind of response, but because it's a particular response in me towards something else that is potentially quite abject or grotesque. If people don't like it, essentially, then that doesn't mean you're necessarily wrong, because like is meaningless. But if they don't engage with it, then there's a serious problem. Well, I think if, if you're doing this, this thing, to a certain extent, you do have to be kind of obsessed with it, or you have to be sufficiently obsessed with it or engaged with it to such a degree that, that it dominates, that, it's, that you go from reading the newspaper to actually producing some elaborately weird object. So that process has to be obsessive, otherwise it's a hobby, essentially. Inspiration assumes that there's a kind of a vacuum and then some kind of some sort of germination happens and then suddenly there's a splitting of nuclei and then something great happens. I think there's a, there's a more of a swamp and in that swamp certain things dominate and certain things don't, but that swamp is always kind of lukewarm and it's always kind of bubbling and it's always there. Standard Bank does, does kind of graft on, onto that model and that it allows you to do things, uh, in my instance, that I hadn't necessarily thought of and I hadn't thought of myself in that institutional framework. So there were certain things that I wanted to do, whereas this allows you uh, a whole network and a whole environment and a context and a, a thing that allows you to do it, which is great.